Hey guys, so this is the uh, condensed video with all my scary stories that I never release. So I've done a couple of them already, which is basically just the tip of the iceberg because there's a lot more. Now, as for the video itself, I don't know if this is going to be a long video or a short video because it's hard to just upload the same stuff on top of editing all of it. But nonetheless, I'm going to upload some of the stories that I never planned to release. And yeah, I, I hope you guys enjoy them. So, without further ado, you know, here is the complete uh, video of all the stories that I've done. So, uh, enjoy. Damn, I hate not being able to sleep. Now, before anyone says anything, I don't have any conditions such as insomnia or paranoia or anything like that. I'm pretty sure I would know if I did. But that's beside the point. You're probably wondering what I'm talking about and why I'm in so much distress. Well, allow me to explain. I was at my friend's house watching movies with them, and that's really all. However, as you can imagine, we eventually got tired after watching movies and doing what else. So, that led to us basically falling asleep, and I remember waking up shortly after. The house was in complete darkness. I assumed that this had been a power outage, but after the movies we watched, I was skeptical, to say the least. I walked through the now dark apartment building, using my hands to navigate, of course, because it was so dark. I eventually got to the kitchen and cracked open a can of beer. Now, as I did this, I was actually contemplating on going home, considering the fact that I don't think I could really stay the night, considering I had a lot of other things to do. So, I made up my mind, got my keys, got into the car, and got ready to go home. The next day, I woke up, and I got a call from my friend saying, if he ever wants to come round again, have a party, that he can always do so, and that I'm free to come round, but I think I was going to pass off the offer on this one. I continued my day as normal, watching TV, relaxing, doing some other stuff as well that needed to be done, and going to the shop. Basic stuff, really. It was only when I got back from the shop that things began to get a little strange. For starters, I noticed that things had been placed wrongly. You'd have to pay closer attention though, because it wouldn't be noticeable if you just looked at it at a first glance. But this wasn't a first glance. Considering I had to look at it twice. Now, as you can imagine, I didn't really know what else to do and I just thought it was a minor thing and maybe I placed them there in a drunken stupor when I was walking back. I mean, my memory was still a bit foggy. Shortly after that realization, I then continued on with my day doing more tasks, and overall, everything seemed to be normal. No strange things happening, no coincidences of any kind, just a normal day. It was only when it got dark outside that things began to get that little bit more stranger. For starters, I was about to go to sleep, considering it had been a long day of doing mundane tasks, and quite frankly, I would like a bit of a rest. So. Being the lazy person that I am, I went up the stairs and got ready for bed and was about to just fall asleep when almost all the power in my room went off. My TV just completely flat out went off and everything else. Now, this wouldn't be so annoying if it wasn't that I was actually going to watch my favourite show before I went to bed. Now, I went to see what the source of it was, maybe a faulty wire or if it could have been a power outage. And the power came back on again. And as you can imagine, I was relieved and was about to switch on the TV again when the power came off again. Now, needless to say, this got all real fast, and at that point I was fed up, so I just went to bed all angry and mad. But I did say to myself that I will resolve the situation in the morning, and that's what I did. I got up. And this time, I actually conducted an exper experiment on what the problem was. 
Needless to say, it couldn't have been a fuse, because obviously the fuses were fine, so were the wires and everything like that, and it turns out there was no power outage. So, as for what it could be, I don't know, but I was about to find out. I unplugged everything, my TV, my games consoles, my computer, everything, and just sat there waiting for something to happen. And the craziest thing of what, out of all this is that the TV and every electronic device came on. And as I said before, I unplugged everything. Needless to say, this caught me off guard and I was immediately curious. Now, I actually posted about this and I got no responses from anyone that had the same thing. Well, until a day later, it turns out someone did reply I said they had some similarities between their incident and mine. Now, needless to say, we both conducted the same experiment, and it happened. Everything was the same this time, ranging from power cords to anything along those lines. I went to sleep that night both scared and intrigued. I wanted to find out what the mystery behind all this was, and to this day, I don't know if this dream meant something. Honestly, it's just a dream, and I don't think dreams mean anything at all. Maybe I'm just going insane, but... Anyway, I'm about to tell you something that may or may not add something to the story. I awoke in a dreamlike state. I was in a blank place that, honestly, I couldn't even see myself. That being said, I don't even know if I was in the dream, per se. The only thing that I noticed that was odd about all this was a creepy, ominous feeling, as if I, I wasn't alone in this dream world or whatever it was, and it turns out I wasn't. I was plagued by horrible sounds of whispers that never really stopped. They were constant and very rapid, and I could barely make out what they were saying. It was something about some really weird incantation. To this day, I'm still not very sure, actually. All I can say is that I hope this dream was just a figment of my imagination and nothing real. Because chances are, if it correlates to real life, I, I don't know what I'm going to do. But there's one thing for sure. I hope to God it was all just a night of scares and nothing more. I don't like my new room. My parents say that it's natural, and that the fact that we moved into a new house is it's new, and I'll be honest, I, I don't like change, but this room, this room is unsettling beyond belief. I have had to stay in here now for four nights, and I am already sick of it. The constant squeaking of the floor below me, it, it annoys me, and I can even hear it through the thin paper walls and the thin frame that I can even call a floor for that matter. It's just flat out eerie, every night, constantly, from like early in the morning to later in the night, I can, I can hear it all the time, it, it's, it's constant, it's rapid, and Honestly, I've even told my brother about it, and he says I'm just overreacting, which is, which is actually not that bad of a solution. I mean, fair enough, I, I could be rea overreacting, but I know very well that I'm not. I'm not insane, and if I was, I'm pretty sure I would know, because, okay, maybe I wouldn't. You see, I'm legitimately losing my mind over this damn room. It, Forgive me for my rambling, it's uh, I just need some to vent. I'll start from the beginning. When we first moved into this house, it was okay. I didn't see anything wrong with it. It was only normal is the best way I can describe it. It was it was normal. The first time we actually went in, we were just having a look at it to see if we actually wanted to buy the place and 
none of the rooms had an eerie presence. It was only when we got to the upstairs room, more specifically, my room. The scariest detail about it is that it was closer to the landing, and it meant that I could hear everything. Everything, like the, the squeaky floors and everything. And of course, my stupid brother, oh what does he do? He doesn't let me have the nice room for once and sacrifice something for his brother. He just takes the nice one and just... <sighs> Sorry again, I, I got angry, but that you get the idea. He always does the most annoying stuff. And you want to know what's something that's even more annoying? Every night, he will purposely try to walk up the stairs really slowly and just make more noise while doing it. And it drives me insane. It really does. And I must have told him now countless times to stop making noises while I'm trying to sleep, but he always refuses it. And what's strange is, whenever I tell or even say anything about this, even even our parents defend him, it's, it's annoying to say the least, it really is, but I just don't understand why they do that. Needless to say, after a while of doing this and going back and forth at each other, we eventually decided that we were going to resolve this once and for all, which led to him actually spending the night in my room for once. Now, some people may see that as a kind gesture, but Honestly, I don't know what else to think at this point. All I can really say is that he was annoying as hell. And if he was going to experience everything from his point of view for once, then at least he'd finally see the suffering I had to deal with. Turns out in the morning, my brother described everything that I did, ranging from the squeaky floorboards to the stairs, the everything, everything. He described it all in accurate detail, just like I had. However, I did have my suspicions, so I asked him a couple more questions, and I was amazed to find out that he even had all the answers to them, so he couldn't be faking it. It was only the next day that we decided we were going to make sure that we could find the culprit of this. We originally thought it could be like mice or something of that nature, but we wanted to be sure, so we conducted an experiment. I waited on the landing eagerly, while he stayed in my bedroom. Now, my brother was never the weak type, as he would describe it. He was more of the brave one, but that is to say, I wanted to show for once that maybe I could at least show him that I was at least better at him than something. That's a bit of a petty thing, I know, but oh well, it's what I thought at the time. So anyway. After eagerly awaiting for what must have been hours of no sleep and just waiting on the landing, I saw something move in the darkness, but I couldn't quite make out the shape of it. It definitely looked human, or at least for what I could see of it, it looked human. It had the outline of a head, a body, legs, arms, everything a human has. However, the only real thing that I noticed that was off about it is its horns on its head. I, I don't even know myself. Now, I, I know it sounds like a cliche, I, I do, but if you ever saw a human being with horns on its head or some unhuman like qualities, I'm pretty sure you would be scared too, right? There's, there's no way it's just me. Because I booked it. I legitimately booked it. I ran to my room, woke up my brother, goodness knows how he was asleep, and I specifically told him that there was something down the stairs. Naturally, he went there, and by the time he did, it was gone. Nothing could be seen. He called me many times like I was a baby or wimp, but I know what I saw, and I specifically made my point clear. It was only when our mother ran out and told us to go to bed and start fighting that we did and used to say that night was a bit of a blur. 
but I know that everything I saw that night was real. If not, then I don't know what else to say. I, I might actually be getting a saying here, but this is why, and I will phrase this once more, I hate my new room. An investigation took place a month ago. I don't know why or what the investigation was about, but from what I've heard from the general public, it was about a murder case of some sort. I say that very loosely because I have no idea what the whole thing was about. All I know is that there's an investigation going in one of the current buildings near to where I live. The building was old to begin with. No one really wanted to move into it because of how old it was and quite frankly the government themselves were planning on turning it into a different building. I don't know what they were going to use it for but nonetheless maybe it was for, for some kind of business or whatever. Anyway, only a month ago a new neighbour moved into the house, next door to mine as a matter of fact. Now he did a lot of weird things. Now. I would catch him going outside to his garden and doing whatever, mainly just planting plants or doing general garden work which at first was fine, but things began to get progressively weird. He would start making bigger plots around the area, almost digging into my backyard, which kind of annoyed me because I don't want anyone invading my territory, thank you very much. And feel free to say whatever you will about that, yes I'm aware, but it's my house, and I don't want anyone crossing over onto it at the end of the day. Over time, I gradually forgot about him, however, as you do, because I had more important things to worry about than a crazy neighbor that just does a lot in his garden. Now, a couple days or so later, I just got back from doing a bunch of stuff, mainly shopping, and the first thing I did was mainly just go up to my room and watch a bit of TV for a bit. Now, it was all normal, nothing really weird happened until I spotted movement outside and what appeared to be the sound of aggressive and loud conversation. So I peeked my head out my window only to find one of my neighbors yelling at the crazy one that always digs a lot in his garden. Now, throughout the entire ordeal, nothing particularly strange happened, it was just a typical argument. But the creepy thing was, he made really aggressive hand gestures towards my neighbour. And they were really aggressive to the point where, if you take a closer inspection upon them, he might actually do something with those hands. And I'm not talking about giving him a pat on the back. After a while though, eventually it dived down and, well, the unthinkable didn't happen. He didn't grab a knife or, from what I see, and then go over and kill him. He just went into his house and throughout the entire day, everything else was peaceful. The next two days were nice as well. Nothing strange happened. On the third day, however, that's when things begin to get a little bit more dicey, so to speak. My neighbor often took really wide and psychotic glances at the neighbor that he was arguing with yesterday, and on top of all that, it didn't really help the fact that my neighbor was also retaliating and doing the same thing to aggravate him. I don't know if this was his plan, and let's be honest, it probably wasn't. But after the events that ensued, I wouldn't be too sure what to think anymore. The next couple of days, everything was normal, as you can imagine. However, I believe it was the fifth day in. That's when things got even more worse. It was only on, as I said, the fifth day that cops were called. I didn't know what for, but I had an idea, though I hoped it wouldn't be that idea. 
One of the police officers stated that he was here to see if anyone had any evidence or had witnessed the crime that happened near to the house that that psychotic neighbor was in. I said no because I didn't have any proper or official evidence until it all came back to me. I remember the conversation and told the police officer about it but nothing really was said after that. The whole town was in general shock and nothing was really said, it was all enclosed information until a couple of weeks later. The public was then informed that an investigation would be taking place at, yes, you guessed it, the house next to mine, which was the psychotic's neighbor's house. And that's where we are today. We're still undergoing the investigation, and I have heard nothing from anyone about it. But perhaps the craziest thing about all this is that as of now in the investigation, nothing uh, conclusive came out of it. It turns out that no one lived there at all, which disturbs me a lot more than anything else would. And I don't know what happened that night, but I'm pretty sure that I saw the last moments of the neighbor and I don't know what else to think anymore. Me and my friend love ghost hunting, but I don't think we'll ever do it again. The reason why? Well, it started after we tried to do a exploration and we were going to film it and post it on YouTube as a matter of fact, but suddenly we ran out of the abandoned place before we could even get the camera out. So it just goes to show how scary it really gets when you're in an abandoned place and trying to document the strange happenings that surround it. Anyways, I'm getting off track. It was a typical Thursday for me and my friend and we weren't doing much, as you can imagine, until we got the smart idea that we were going to go and do some ghost exploration. Now, we didn't originally bring the greatest equipment, it was a mediocre camera at most, and my friend only had his phone with him, so I guess we were the iconic duo of terrible ghost hunting, considering the fact we couldn't really catch anything with good quality. But anyways, we were there, and we were looking through this abandoned hospital. Apparently the legend behind it states that if you go in there, you can hear the echoes and cries of the former patients that uh, sadly were transferred to this hospital due to their mental illnesses. For those that haven't guessed, it was actually a asylum. I use the term hospital very loosely, considering the crazy stuff that happened there is already bad by itself. But nevertheless, we want to try and document the weirdness of this place, and that's what we did. My friend and I went down one of the main hallways to, I think, one of the old operating rooms. At first it was normal and nothing creepy happened, until we went out of the room. The lights came on, and all the equipment, as well as some of the apparatus, started to come back on as well. We were scared, and we didn't want to continue on with this anymore. But we were still curious and wanted to find out what the dark mysteries behind this hospital or asylum really was all about. We walked through the abandoned hallways even more and gradually getting more scared to the point where we were holding onto our cameras very tightly. My friend pointed out something in the distance, a not human figure, it moved very quickly and crawled about as if it was bent over or scuttling across the floor. Needless to say, my friend and I immediately panicked and we ran out there. Now as for what that thing was, I have no idea, and neither does my friend. But if there's one thing I can tell you, then it would have to be don't go and explore abandoned places. As a matter of fact, I think I'm lucky to keep my sanity. No, I'm not trying to scare you by any of this, I'm just simply warning you, because 
Although this is a bit of a short story, my experiences are still unchanged and I'm still very much terrified. So if you don't want to be scared, I suggest that you don't go exploring abandoned places. Because you might not be as lucky as us to even survive. Okay, so I just want to address this real quick. I love bar hopping. I've done it so many times, I've actually forgotten to all the places I've been. Now, feel free to joke about that if you wish, but I like to take it with a grain of salt. Even though I've been to so many bars before and forgotten the name of a few, there's one particular that stood out to my memory because it turns out it never really existed. I don't know how I even drank there, believe me, it, it, it baffles me. Maybe it was some kind of reality jump, but I have no idea. But I do remember it very vividly, which is the subject of today's story. So I'm going to tell you about it. It started last year, I think, and I wasn't doing much in particular. I was just drinking, as you do at a bar. And I then realized that there was another bar not too far away from me. Though, for some reason, it wasn't described as one. It was a quote-unquote cafe of sorts, even though it wasn't if it was a bar, but anyway, I digress. The first thing that I immediately noticed is that it was very old-fashioned, like a cowboy-era bar, where everyone would walk in through these weird, flippy gates that you'd walk in through, but anyway, after making my way through there, I quickly realized that the bar was very small as well in size, even though it looked pretty big on the outside. I immediately made my way to the bar and just decided to get a drink. Now there weren't that many on the shelves, but I figured that maybe it was popular. After a while of drinking and just doing whatever it is, I decided that I'd probably take a break and go outside for a smoke. And after a couple of minutes or so, I went back to my hotel and just went to sleep. I remember, I remember waking up the next morning as well and just wanted to go back to that bar and get another drink. After all, it was strangely pretty nice to be there, and not to mention the people were friendly as well. So I made my way over there and nothing really interesting happened to be fair. It was just a typical day for me and that's what it really was. I ended up chatting to some really cool people as well. That being said though, they had a really off accent. I couldn't put my finger on it, but it was weird, to say the least. Anyway, after a while of talking, making new friends, I decided that I'd eventually go back to my hotel and maybe come back again the next morning. The creepy thing is, when I went to bed that night, I had a sudden realization. If it was that old fashioned, do you think this could be a time paradox? No, that being said, I was drunk. I'm going to admit that now, and the fact that I was making up all these crazy solutions in my head about what it could be, it, it, it baffles me to this very day, but what baffles me even more is the following morning when I woke up. I, I made my way to the bar, but all I found was a desolate area with grass and shrubs and nothing else, just an overgrown and overall just old and what appeared to be woodland area now. Turns out I ended up talking to one of the guys that also thought he had a similar experience and he had a theory. And this theory made sense. And this is what creeps me out. It turns out, and I take this with a grain of salt, that apparently this bar was a sort of purgatory. One that time travels and it pops up randomly. Why? That's any, that's as good as anyone's guess. But my theory on the matter is that people that have ever had a near-death experience see this bar and go to it as a sign of redemption. Now, the reason why I say this is because I may not have mentioned it before, 
but I have had many near-death experiences. One of them being pretty traumatic, actually. I was driving one time, and yes, I had a beer in my hand, and well, I did a stupid mistake, and that led to me going off the road, and well, do I need to explain the rest? I don't think I do, but you get the picture. And that's why it creeps me out, mainly because of the fact that if that is the case, then I think this might just make me stop drinking altogether. Now you guys can say whatever you want about this, but I think this is a warning for me to quit doing what I'm doing now and just gather my life and actually get a grip on myself. The thing is, will I ever? I can't leave my house. As of why? Well, it's because my house won't let me. I've been stuck in here for days. I don't even know how I'm still alive, to be honest. But I am still here, so maybe that's a good thing. Anyway, I'm writing this story for many reasons. One, because I just want someone to find me and at least help me out here. I, I begin to go insane, I swear. But anyway, I digress. All I remember is waking up a month ago and just everything being normal. But now, now it's just, it's all hell. The best way I can really describe it is, imagine every time you open a door, it's just, particularly a window as well, any, anything, it's just a white void. I, I've even tried going out, but the next thing I know, I'm back in my room, or whichever place I was in before, and it drives me mad, and I, I, I just don't understand, and the weird thing is, I don't feel hungry, I don't feel thirsty, I am perfectly fine, but the question is, what is this place, and to be, to be perfectly honest with you, I, I don't know, but I wish I could just get out of here already, I'm sick, and tired of being in this damn place, but Anyway, I, I don't really think there is any other way of escaping. Or at least, not that I know. I'll inform you if there is any other way I can escape. Okay, recently a lot of people have been saying that... Have you tried going outside your windows? Yes, I have already tried doing that many times, but... There's... There's still no way of actually getting out. Some of you guys also said that maybe it might be a time paradox or a, a time void that I'm stuck in, but if that was the case, wouldn't it eventually go? It's been a couple of days now and things aren't really happening as they should, everything is still the same. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry for not responding, guys, I've been losing it recently, but people have been to catch on to something, I think. About the void, it's starting to get darker and darker. It's currently grey at the time of looking at it. I don't know what this simul simulates, though. It, it could be anything, ranging from the, maybe the end of this, or just some sick part of this transition. I, I have no idea. But there's one thing I do know, is that I just want to get out of here. Okay, I'm, I'm back again, but this time I think I may have found a way out. Believe it or not, there's actually a part in the void that I think I can stand in. Except when I do stand in it, it doesn't really take me anywhere, it just sinks downwards as if it... It's like sinking sand or something like that. Now what's funny is I've tried actually sinking many times, but I just I just don't want to at the same time because I don't know what lies below and if, even if there is anything below. 
I guess I'll find out soon though. I'm going to try and crawl down and see if I can do anything. I hope to God that I can, but we'll see. Okay everyone, I'm back. Uh, I know you've all been worried recently, but uh, I think I have may have done something. I have basically went down to another layer, I think, um, in a different variation of the void. There aren't that many things that are different aside from the overall atmosphere and tone of the place, but I know that I must be in a different place. It, it's weird to describe, I know, but I know something for sure, and it, it is kind of different. But anyway, there is something bad about all this, and that's the fact that I don't have much power on my phone or anything else. And I have took a couple of pictures around my uh, home as well to compare every time I sunk through the what appeared to be the void and there are some subtle differences such as rooms being slightly more detailed with some things in some things that have been replaced and all that kind of stuff but for the most part I, I don't really know what's going on I'm currently still trying to find out if there's any other way I can get out and as I said I've been sinking through the void for a couple of times now. All it really does is change, but I feel like if I keep doing it, maybe I'll get somewhere. Okay, so I'm back. It's been a couple more days, and I think I've found a way out. It turns out that there's a hollow space in one of the walls in my house. It's hard to find, but I think I finally found it. It's it leads to another room. I don't want to call it a secret room because. I don't really think that's the way to describe it, but it's it's weird. It's like a room within itself. It's it's like a portal or a, or a void. That's the best way I can really describe it. I tried going through this fog or whatever it is, and all that really does is take me to a different variation of the place I was in earlier. So I think I may have found a way out, but just to find out which way to go from here. Okay, I'm now in a different place, but something's off. It turns out there's a night and day cycle, or so I've picked up on. It turns out that it gets white to represent the morning, and then when it's black, it represents night. Now, the creepy thing is, I've recently been introduced to a new present of sorts. It's a human-like entity that can move through walls and do a bunch of stuff like a ghost can, but thing is it can actually interact with things. Now, throughout my unpleasant stay here I have been trying to run from the thing and it turns out whenever it does catch me I don't know what really happens. I just wake up in my bed again but I, I, I feel like I'm a new person in some ways. It's weird to describe it. It's, it's like I've died and I'm being put through the cycle again. So. I've recently been trying to run away from that thing. It's kind of like it destroys my personality in a way. And that's the thing that scares me the most. Now, I don't really think I'll ever get out of here particularly, but if I if I do, I'll I'll most certainly inform you guys. So please just keep talking and just please do not lose interest. I really want to get out of here and. If you guys could help me just a little bit more, that that would be that'd be great. Thank you, everyone. Okay, this is the detective Ryan. We uh, we didn't find any foul play involved. So the, his body is perfectly untouched, and we don't know if he's alive or dead. He seems to be in a trance-like state, so. We don't really want to mess it up. But it's like he's in a coma or something. A coma, you see. So it seems so. But we can't decipher what it truly is. It, it's undescribable. And according to his brain patterns and brain waves, it, it's weird. It's like he's running from something. Like, like he's scared of himself. Scared of himself? Apparently. I mean. 
his movement throughout his brain is sporadic. And I don't know what he's scared of, but it must be something that is really damn creepy. You're right there. You're right there, detective. <laughs>